So when I shoot one of these guys, you'll see, and hopefully hear, an explosion. Right. You can see that fire. It's very quick. It's very subtle. But it's definitely there. And when it's not there, you can you can tell. Well, let me make a new tab here. Just, blah blah blah. Big. Okay. So here's without the explosion or the noise. All right. It just disappears. Even when it creates coins, it's not. It looks weird. It's like the thing disappears in coins. Like there's nothing to tie in the fact that the bullet just connected with the robot, right? This is, this is a parallax. This is what it looked like last week. And this is what it looked like if you don't have any tiles. <laughs> you see my shadow there. Or here the shadow gets drawn on that, that stuff. All right. So how do you draw an explosion? Well, I didn't know last week, so I had to go out and look at a bunch of different explosion stuff. And I found this one tutorial that was really cool. I didn't really follow it exactly, but the concept was good and the colors were good for me to just hide it. And I choose my own color values, but um, this is my explosion here. Right. And this is the tutorial that I found uh, by this guy Bad Blood on DeviantArt. Um, so I'll put this link on the notes at the bottom of the game dev page when this episode's over so you can check it out. But he kind of talks about how um, you place the colors and how to create um, the image that he has down here. And I just kind of looked at the basic like flow of how the colors transition through the action of exploding and I applied those to my own version which is I didn't, I didn't use the same colors that he has here. His colors are really good, but I just kind of won mine, you know. Yeah, I didn't want to be a real copycat, so. Like, do my own thing. But the concept's the same, you know. Um, and so that, that link will be there on the notes. And then to create the entity, explode.js. I create a new entity called Explosion, and I give it size. Um, gravity factor of zero, this is important, otherwise it'll fall, and it'll have the same friction and velocity stuff, and you don't want that. You want this to kind of sit in the air when it goes off and fires. Its animation sheet is 16 by 16. Here's the code to get it to animate. You know, zero. It's going at five... every five hundredths of a second, it's changing a frame, I think. Um, and, but it only plays once. And the way I do that, um, also in, in its init section here, I reference the sound effect, which is the explosion noise, and I tell it to play. And then during the update, I look at the animation loop count, right? This is a keyword here, loop count. If it's greater than zero, I rewind the animation, and then I tell it to kill. And the reason I rewind it is if that animation gets reused later on, with another instance of the entity, I want it to start from the beginning again, right? Or if I reuse this entity over again for a different reason. Maybe I'll have one of these loop more later on down the road, or I'll create multiple of it, or I don't know. Anyway, loop count, that's the key here. If it's greater than zero, which means it's played once, then you want it to kill, right? And that'll remove it from the game screen. So the explosion gets created during the initialize, it sets the sound effect volume to 1 because I make all my sound effects at full volume and then I adjust them inside impact so that later on down the road if I have a menu they can adjust all the sound effect volumes together and then uh, I play the sound effect and then during the update if the animation completes it removes the entity now now we're gonna get into the world of sound I think well, let me talk about how these get spawned right so this is the entity code for the explosion. Uh, how does it appear? Well, the bullet, all right, this is my bolt that I shoot out. The bullet, if it comes in contact with the robot, right, then, ignore this coin stuff because I'm going to talk about that later, um, it'll spawn an entity explode, other dot position x, other dot position y, offset, right, 
So it passes an offset to the explosion, and it passes in the y and the x coordinates of the robot that it or the robot right, um, that it came in contact with, and it'll spawn it on the page right before it kills the uh, the robot guy. Right. So so bullet hits robot. Right. Some weird coin stuff goes on. Ignore it for now. Explosion spawns. Right. Robot dies, explosion completes its animation count, dies, right, and that's the end, right? Cool, huh? Um, now, the sound effect for the explosion is here, and it's in the main.js file, right, under a property, explode one underscore its effect, so it'll get loaded as the game gets loaded before the init. Right? If you declare your sound down here in the init function, then it won't preload the asset. It'll actually the game will have to complete loading your sound file before it can initialize the game. This way, you can preload it ahead of time, though it'll be available when they start to play. Important little nugget of information there. Now, how do I make my sound effects? Well, friends, here comes the fun of HTML5. Um, Sound doesn't work the same in every browser. Luckily for me, Impact will let me use a star, so I don't have to reference both anymore. I think it used to in an earlier version, though. But I need an MP3 and an OGG file to cover the big five, right? Which is Opera, Safari, Chrome, Firefox, and IE, right? If I want to cover those browsers, I need to have an MP3 file and an, an OGG file, OGG Warbus file, for every sound or music that I want to use in the game. Now, how I go about doing that is I use some free tools because I'm cheap. Um, one of the really cool tools that I use a lot, and this link will also be in the notes. Uh, let me just make a notepad file so I can write down links I'm promising will be in the notes on the blog page. And explode tutorial. Okay. I use this thing called SFXR. This was created by a guy during Ludum Dare, or Ludum Dare, which is a, a tri-annually um, video game development competition comp, if you will. It's a game jam. Every three months, we spend like two days to make a game from scratch. Um, it's a lot of fun. I, I always have a blast doing it, or at least taking part in it, even if I'm not actually working on a team or making a game. He made this tool during a Ludum Dare. Uh, this is LD48 down here. And this will generate sound effects. So if I want to make an explosion, I can click Explosion. And every one I click, it'll make a new noise. It'll generate it. I can change it down here between 16-bit and 8-bit, so I want 8-bit explosions, right? Or I want 16-bit, right? I want to hear some pickup noises, right? And actually, I want a new coin pickup noise for a rarer coin, so I'm just going to give you an example of how I go from this tool to an MP3 and an OGG file. Um, and then right into impact. So a full run through is about to come right now. Okay. So first, I need a new coin noise, right? I want something a little high pitched. And noticeable. We'll start with this one. I might change this later on, but that's the, the noise I want. I'm going to export this wave down here at this button. Okay. I'm going to save it. I save all my uncompressed sounds in the sound folder, and they're up on GitHub also. And I'm going to call this one. I try to stay with the same numbering, so I'm going to say collect five. I might go and rename all these someday soon. All right, so now I've exported that as a WAV file, and I need to open it. This is another free program called Audacity. And I'm going to take Audacity, and I'm going to go and open that Collect 5 WAV file here, okay? So this is it. All right. 
And now I'm going to take this file and I'm going to export it as both an AUG Vorbis and I have this compressed folder. So my sound folder is here. That's where all the WAV files live at. Inside of that, there's this compressed folder. I like to organize and keep them separate. I'm going to save this AUG Vorbis here in the separate folder. All right. And now I'm going to export an MP3. Now when you first install Audacity, I'm going to put that link also on the, the game page on the blog. Um, I believe in Windows and maybe in all the other OSs, I'm not sure. You're going to need your own file to be able to export MP3s. And I use um, Lame. It'll prompt you and walk you through how to get that file. I'm going to go try to track that down, like the whole process of it, and put that maybe as a link also if I have time on the blog. But just so you know, when you first install Audacity, you're going to be able to export all your odd files out. You won't be able to easily export MP3s without following the pop-ups that it tells you as you try. But if you just go and try to export an MP3 file and there's an issue, Audacity will walk you through on the file that you need. And I think if you Google it, you'll be able to, to get yourself set up pretty easily. I'm going to try to write that instruction out later on, but I can't make any promises because my time is like really slammed right now. Uh, I just want to do my best for you though. Um, so let me know. And also post comments or something to remind me if I don't write it up for you. I'll try to, to write something out. So I'm going to export this as an MP3 also. Okay. All right. And now in my folder for a colony courier and media sound. Right here's my wave file. Here's collect five. And under compressed, I have collect five MP3 and AUG. So now I need to create a new reference here before my init statement for those sound effects. So I'm going to just copy and paste this hurt one SMX and I'm going to change it to collect five uh, and change this here to collect five. Right? And now I can use this like I use my explosion noise which is right here, explode one SFX on my on the bullet. No, 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 on the explode. Where is it? Right. So IG.game explode and set the volume and play it. I can do the same thing with my clack noises too if I want. So pretty sweet, huh? So let's recap really quick. Uh, getting sound effects into impact, I use a tool called SFXR, which was created in Ludum Dare. I generate the sound that I want. I then export it as a wave, right, using this export.wave file. Then use a program called Audacity to open up the wave file, and then I export this twice as both an AUG and an MP3 file. I then take the folder location of the AUG and MP3 file, I remove the uh, the suffix that declares the file declaration type, and I just use the path in impact above my init statement as my main.js, I create a new sound, a new instance of ig.sound, a sound class on any, right? Or it's not really any, but a sound class. And then later on in my code, if I need to use that, I can use ig.game, the sound effect name that I gave it back in the main.js file. And then I can adjust things like the volume property or the play. I can tell it to play or to stop. Um, and there's a lot of other things you can do too. Not many, but there's, there's quite a few other properties you can use to affect those. So that is that is the recap of creating a sound for impact. Um, and, and I'll go back and let's talk. Um, the explosion, it gets spawned by the bullet before the robot gets killed. I spawn this explosion entity. And this explosion entity uses this current anim dot loop count to figure out if the animation is played all the way through, and if it has, it removes it from the game. So it'll play Explosion once and then remove it. Um, everything in motion should look like this when you shoot a robot. Minus the coins. You could hear that. Boom.